The following program is paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Fresno on 105.9 The FM KMJ. Now, live in studio, your host, local real estate expert, Craig Barton. Good morning, Central Valley. I am your host, Craig Barton, and welcome to the Real Estate Radio Network, the most important hour of radio each week here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Real Estate Radio is a show dedicated to bringing some rational thought to the crazy world that we live in and helping you to rebuild the Central Valley's housing and credit markets. Within every market, there are solutions as well as tremendous opportunities. You just need some trusted advice. And that's exactly what you're going to hear every Sunday morning from 7 to 8 a.m. right here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, good morning, kids. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is this train ready to roll? We're ready. We are ready. I think I can. I think I can. <laughs> we were just saying before we came on the air, throw Mama from the train. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's because we were all walking in a little groggily on if, Sunday. If Mama's so slowing us down, we're yeah. throwing her from the train, right? Get her out of here. <laughs> As always, it's so good to have my special co-host, Michelle Pettiscavalli, here in the studio with us. Michelle is with Valleywide Homes. Michelle is a licensed realtor and a trusted friend. Thanks, Craig. That came from the heart. I you know, it's about time a heartfelt <laughs> welcome came to me. <laughs> Jeez, I'm totally it this whole time. <laughs> right with those Jeez. empty words. It, it was that obvious. It was. Oh, my god! glad to know you got a little heart, man. <laughs> I'm I got a little bitty heart in there. Yeah. Yes, I do. You do. We also have Kate Island with us. Kate, good morning, kid. Good morning. Kate with UBS Financial Services, our local market professional here with our market update. Will you, <laughs> I'm going to say this, will you teach me something? There for a change? Lot. Yes. Because well, I, mean, I say for a change. No, I mean, I didn't mean it that way. I've been I'm, trying. I'm That's not very teachable. To. But I, I'm just say, keep trying to teach me. It's Absolutely. all the little things. Absolutely. I'm excited That's that she's here. here. I know. I yeah. am too. We also have Brian Susan, broker associate with Remax Gold, as our special, special, special guest host. Hey, thanks, Craig. It's thanks top so of the morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the Real Estate Radio Network gives us the opportunity to reach so many people efficiently for one full hour each and every week. Our goal at the Real Estate Radio Network is to get you, our listeners, the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we can help bring you back home. You always hit that so good. Right, you know, last, I want to come back week, home. Last week she did it so good she kept wanting to do it. Back home. Back <laughs> home. Back home. You did. You sound like I have Tourette's or something. <laughs> <laughs> they could get dangerous. Could. Hopefully Johnny, not. don't start Hopefully repeating not. me. She was just eager, and that was the right. decaffeinated Michelle. I <laughs> know. I, I had to go back on. I couldn't stay did off the really? caffeine. I did. Seriously. They said, hey, Michelle, here's high blood pressure medicine. <laughs> I said, right on. Give me my coffee back. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> that was one of the perks that you got back that once you got is, the high That is, because I can't do it anymore. I just oh, can't. Awesome deal. Well, I'm super excited about today's show. We're going to take a look at some of the stop, top stories in the news, and I tell you what living in California mm -hmm. never ceases to amaze me. There's all sorts Very of news going on around us. We also have Kate Island, as we mentioned, with our Market Watch update. And uh, Brian's going to talk a little bit about being a consumer and being connected in today's market. Absolutely. Yeah, can't, there's still people out there without computers, guys. I know. I, I, I've dealt with a few. On. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days, right? Al, Al Gore's getting the word out. <laughs> it must be good. It's good. It's yeah, good. I'm we sure like he's that. really proud. I, I hope he's getting a residual for that one. <laughs> I, I really do. do. We're also going to take a look at some more listener questions. Again, the questions keep getting better. Make sure you stay with us. Again, if you have any real estate or mortgage related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, call us anytime, please. 800-979-3958. We'd so love to hear from you. You can also check out our resources online and you can listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network. I was doing that this morning, by the way. Well, Kate's last show with us was amazing. Mm -hmm. And Thank I you. really, really enjoyed last week as well. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, mm -hmm. I think Every week it gets better, and the questions and, and the participation from the public gets better. It's Absolutely. good stuff. <laughs> so, Kate, we like to re-listen to you. Thank you. So. <laughs> Is that why I keep getting invited back? Yeah. yeah. We want to learn I'm waiting for the call where it's like, we're not going to need you anymore. But well, we didn't renew time. your contract. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You Thank can you. go listen to those past shows by going to reofresnohomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, use press four keywords. Friend Valleywide on Facebook. Or use press four keywords. AMJ call Valleywide. To get connected to us any Anytime. We'd so love to hear from you. Let's talk about today's hot properties. Today's hot properties are brought to you by Perfect.
Perfect Home Inspections, residential, multifamily, commercial. Just use press four keywords, Perfect Home Inspections, or call Jerry today for your Perfect Home Inspection at 352-6941. That's 352-6941. Well, today's first hot property is um, located down off of Fowler and Kings Canyon. It is a two-story, two-bedroom. Now, this is going to sound kind of odd, but let me... Two-story, yeah, two-bedroom? Two, two yeah. I see. I knew you were going to say that right off the bat. Well, it's it, a little... It, it's, it sounds like it's little. It's not. This is a, uh, a Centex home mm-hmm. uh, built, let's see here, 1,725 square feet, built in 2008. Public record shows that it's a two-bedroom, uh, 2.1 bath. It is a two-bedroom with a loft. There was a den or a, a loft option in mm-hmm. this particular floor plan. Uh, you could utilize it as a bedroom. You could also go in and convert it with uh, with permits and get it permitted, uh, changing it to a three-bedroom, um, adding a closet as well. Um, this property was appraised. It is a HUD home. It was, okay. uh, as all HUD homes are appraised prior to coming on the market, it was appraised with an FHA appraisal for a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So you've what got seventeen hundred and twenty-five square feet, four years old, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Can you imagine what they paid good. for that? I do what have a, a question though. Yeah. What, what's a what's two point one bathrooms? Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a <laughs> I've toilet. Heard of a half. It's a toilet and a sink. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what they're saying. It, public record says it's only point. Yeah. It's a litter box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> seems like more than right a tenth of a bathroom door. if you've got a toilet and a sink. But okay. Yeah, they I call just... point one utilizing utilizing a slider and using the backyard. <laughs> You're right, an outhouse, a tree in the backyard. Yeah, this particular okay. property is eligible for FHA financing, uh, and it would save the buyer the cost of the appraisal because the FHA appraisal's already been completed. And do you know also, Craiger, on that one? I, they probably don't. They can do a 203K to convert that. Yes, I they just could. Want to say. It is oh, they can combine yes. it all it into a 203K, for 203K financing and convert that puppy that into, into a master suite. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> you might even get a third bedroom out of it. You, know, you, you use Seriously. that square footage and convert that and Absolutely. add it to the footprint. That's, yeah. uh, that's a big problem. That's a big piece yeah. I don't know that they cover kitty doors, though. Wow. Okay. All right. Well, today's second hot property, 2276 East Trenton Avenue, Fresno, California, 93720. Major Cross Streets, Chestnut Antigue, uh, located in Fresno County, obviously. This four-bedroom, three-bath, 2,598-square-foot home, built in 1993. Clovis Unified Schools, all this for only $250,000. Again, it is a HUD home as well, and the property was appraised at two fifty. dollars Bidding deadline is daily for both of these properties, and both you can save the the price of the appraisal because that appraisal is completely portable. Again, if you'd like more information about today's hot properties, please give us a call anytime at 800-979-3958 or use press 4 keyword KMJ Hot Property. And we'll send you more information about this hot property right to your phone. Look for more hot properties each week right here on the Real Estate Radio Network. All right, let's get to it. Top stories in the news, okay? 1,257 single-family active listings in Fresno County. What's that mean for the market right at the moment, Brian? Yeah, the market is uh, really tight. We have a limited supply of homes, and that's every, that's that's an understatement, huh? Well, you know, uh, you're <laughs> so looking, twelve fifty seven. That's a limited supply in Absolutely. today's market. It when is. you look back at January, we had just under three thousand listings. Dan Dan, oh, Dan wow. Hawkins, president of the association, was here on last week's show, and we had roughly about twenty nine hundred listings. So from simple a simple economic standpoint it 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 does it makes it extremely extremely tight yeah. and puts a lot of upper now the good thing is it puts limited supply puts upward pressure on prices but it also puts a lot of pressure on buyers and as we've said in past shows if there's 11 offers there's 10 losers you know that property you mentioned in Clovis Unified uh, that Clovis Unified area alone only has about 300 properties currently listed yeah. wow. it's just unbelievable Yep. And, and not to mention the upward pressure on real estate agents. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, there's pressure on prices. It's, it's, yeah, you guys it's pressure all the way around, all not necessarily around. upward. <laughs> Mortgage rates rise for the third, third straight week, row, according to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. Kate, talk to us. Yeah, so uh, the market, and for anybody who's an investor, you probably have noticed the market's been going up pretty nicely. Um, it's and, and that probably has caused rates to rise because... If the market's going up, more people want their money in stocks as opposed to bonds, so they're pulling money out of bonds, um, and that will drop the prices of bonds, which will cause interest rates to rise. Opportunity to be aggressive or a little more aggressive Absolutely, as opposed yeah. to... But what's, what's kind of funny, I guess, and contrary about that is that you know, just a couple weeks ago, there was all this talk about the Fed's 
doing another round of quantitative mm-hmm. easing, which would actually lower rates. So, you know, rates were pretty low. And you would think if they were talking about lowering rates that, like, why would the rates go up? You know, so there's a lot that's that may not make sense in a couple months that's going, you know, that's going sure. on right now. Has there been any talks or any changing in the attitude that there would be another round of quantitative easing? You know, the last two weeks, like, there, I mean, it's kind of been mums the word because it was, it was all over the news for us because we were just getting a barrage of negative economic news right. things have gotten a little bit better um, you know it's been pretty quiet over in Europe and I think that's really the reason that some sure. of the pressure has been lifted off the market so <laughs> just wait <laughs> yeah exactly. well and then so then you know if the feds don't ease a lot of that's already been baked into the market and so if they don't it's there there is definitely the potential you could see the market come down yeah you know if, if they decide not to ease it at the end of the month so wow. we'll see again anything south of four percent if you're talking owner occupied whether it's conventional or FHA yeah. financing is yeah. still yeah. phenomenal um, and with uh, home affordability being at a, at a low that we haven't seen in roughly about 10 years still a great time to buy no doubt now and I will say this you, know, you have to also think in the back of your mind whatever's stopping you or holding you back from potentially selling or buying right at the moment you may want to revisit that and it's not that I'm trying to push anybody over a cliff or, or trying to you know pull their arm behind their back but you really do have to take a long hard look if there is something again michelle making a decision or not making a decision is still making a decision absolutely absolutely let's also take a look at hud home store the website where you can find every single hud home store nationally on this website there's a new app and it is a mobile iphone app they will have it soon for android you can actually load this app to your phone and search for hud homes on your iphone it's awesome. really cool. slick. It is that really, is really awesome. cool. Also, Sierra Pacific and Access Appraisal Management, we talked about this at last week's show, and I want to continue to, to uh, promote this. They are hosting an industry update to help real estate agents and really try, and loan officers as well get more in the know about the latest on appraisals and appraisal updates, valuations, uh, potentially um, if, if there's a valuation that came in low, challenging that particular report, report but just making sure that Everyone's in the know as far as trends are concerned, what's going on in the market. And it's really, really important because not only do loan officers, but agents also need to be in the know. And it's in an attempt to also make sure that we create a connecting point where there has been potentially a disconnect in the past just because folks are not necessarily educated as to what is the process. So this particular, um, it is going to be held the 28th of this month. Mm-hmm. It's going to start at 3 o'clock, first hour and a half. It's at Fort Washington Country Club, I right. must say. Right. Uh, first hour and a half is all teaching, all class. Um, second hour and a half is actually a mixer with hors d'oeuvres and all sorts of good food and good stuff. So um, if you can, if you're a lender, if you are a realtor, it is free of charge. So sign up. All you have to do is contact Mike Clark at um, Sierra Pacific Mortgage here locally. And uh, do you know you're going, by the way? Yes, I am. I yes. Yeah. <laughs> just letting you know. By the way, and by the way, you are, in fact, going. That's it. By the way, just so you know, put it on your calendar, Craig. Craig. will be there. Yeah, Craig exactly. will be there with me. Let's also talk about... Um, California counties considering eminent domain. This is something, I tell you what, it's, uh, someone used this term recently, it's like an 800 pound marshmallow, trying to get your arms around it, because everybody's got an opinion, and whether you are um, Ed DeMarco, head of the Federal Housing and Finance Agency, or whether you, or whether you are um, on the Board of Supervisors in San Bernardino County, um, this is a really, I think, a it's a hot potato, because there's a number of counties that have been approached um, by a certain entity um, to try to take over properties via eminent domain. So any homeowners, uh, it's an attempt to, if you're upside down, try to keep you in the property. But Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, okay, look at them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just really just holding your breath. Oh, I'm trying not to. Yeah, you know, the plan would, words. Yeah, the plan would adopt an already under construction program um, in Southern California that would use private funds. <laughs> to secure to acquire underwater mortgages, those who were homes that wouldn't sell for enough money to obviously pay off the loans. And under the pro- proposal, the condemned loans would be restructured, lowering the amount owed with the intent of helping the owner keep their property or stay in their property. All sounds really good. I tell you what, though, it's creating uh, really waves in the secondary market because, um, as I mentioned, Ed, Ed DeMarco, head of the FHF uh, Federal Housing Finance Agency, says. Hold on here. This is what could happen. You implement this this program in your county, Fannie and Freddie will stop lending. 
I mean, pure and simple. That's it may not have been said as direct as that, but that's really yeah. what they are talking about. And don't they underwrite like five out, five or six out of every ten mortgages now? It yeah. used to be like Something nine out of roughly. ten, but I mean it's roughly half, right? Roughly. And isn't San Bernardino one of the counties considering us? I know we talked about this earlier, Michelle. Yes, they uh, they filed for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, protection. yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, additionally, <laughs> I'm just going to say. When we say we're make, making history, we are certainly making history in this market. Yes. We talk about how we handle foreclosures differently. We talk about all of these things. Okay, does anybody recall what eminent domain is supposed to be utilized for? And I know this is a hot button here in Fresno right now, but I'm just going to say it is for the infrastructure for the state of California. Roads, highways, freeways, schools. For the benefit of the community. For and the I, public, yeah, absolutely. And, I don't, I and don't so know. when we start I don't know. working <laughs> eminent domain... To fix a problem that's already occurred. Right. Again, you can't fix stupid. Yeah. If the oven is hot and you put your hand in it, guess what? You're going to get burned. Mm-hmm. And the only way you learn that is by doing it once and never doing it again. Right. Well, and my what, concern. You know, yeah, experience is the exactly. teacher. And they give the test first and the lesson second. And my concern. <laughs> with good way to put yeah. it. It's so well put. Yeah. But really, I mean, my concern with, with the way they keep trying to maneuver this market is that people are not going to learn from our experiences. Well, we learn from no. the Depression. We learn from each war. Let's let's have our public well, grow and up it, here. And it's unnatural. And again, you're you know you're you're getting involved in a market, and it's not like it's not going to naturally fix itself. Correct. It's not going to work mm-hmm. itself out. And there's a problem with that because again, like you said, you know the lesson isn't learned. But then also, when you start. You know, it's kind of like the feds and like all the easing that they've done. It's like how you know how much do you put into a Correct. system to quote unquote fix it? It's like what are you, what are you really fixing? Right. right. Like what are you what are you really fixing? And, and and then going back to really the the legal definition of Correct. eminent domain, I just think that you that is like. It, that's a total gray area that they're getting into, but I really think that that's overstepping the bounds of the use of that law. There will, at, at the very, very least, there will be a tremendous amount of pushback if they do try to do this. If someone, uh, Mor- Mortgage Resol- Resolution Partners is the entity in California that they would be partnering up with. And there's multiple counties, um, cities of Fontana, Ontario, um, San Francisco, um, San Bernardino County. This is not something, I don't think this is going to be a real passing fancy. Um, there may be some precedents that set here, but it, it, it just bodes for trouble all the way. Oh, around. yeah, because where does it end? Mm-hmm. Where does it end? Mm-hmm. You know, if, if, if one county or city uses eminent domain to help people with homes that are underwater, then the next count, someone in the next county over says, well, they got it. Well, I want it too. Mm-hmm. Then, so then where does it stop? And, the, and then and then can it go to commercial real estate mm-hmm. and everybody everybody gets a bailout guess what guys like the, eventually there's not enough money and this is and this it's yeah yep. I don't think Where it's do a good stop? idea <laughs> well I mean eventually it's going to affect personal property rights which you know absolutely uh, that's one of the things that we pride ourselves as being Americans is ownership of property and uh, when the government starts messing with things uh, usually it doesn't come out better <laughs> That's a nice 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 way of putting it. Well said. Again, if you have any real estate or mortgage-related questions or questions regarding the information that we cover on our show, call us anytime, 800-979-3958. We'd love to hear from you. Again, you can also check out our resources online. You can listen to past shows from the Real Estate Radio Network on YouTube by going to our website at reofresnohomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, use press four keywords. Friend to Valley Wide on Facebook. Or use press four keywords. KMJ, call Valley Wide. To call us anytime. We'd love to hear from you. Well, coming up, Brian Souza, broker associate from Remax Gold in Fresno here, is going to show us what it takes to keep you as a consumer connected in today's fast-paced real estate market. Make sure you stay with us. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network, helping to redefine real estate on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as-is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com. 
Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, NMLS number 342-062-235-952. California Department of Real Estate License, 0122 Six zero. Have you ever thought about going solar? It's never been easier to go solar than with a SunPower lease. You'll start saving money the very first day. Arise Solar has a team of energy consultants ready to help you determine if going solar is right for you. Start taking control of your energy costs. Contact Arise Solar, your local SunPower Elite dealer at 449-8989. That's Arise Solar at 449-8989. Or use press 4 keywords, Arise Solar. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, we told you we've got Brian Sousa, broker associate from REMAX Gold from Fresno here in the studio with us. And uh, Brian's going to talk to us a little bit about what it takes as a consumer to be connected or to stay connected in today's fast-paced real estate market because there's a lot of information out there, Brian, and there a lot sure of ways is, you can get it. You know, you know, the bottom line is that people in today's world love information. They, they get getting the information on their computers, their smartphones, the email, the Internet, television, and uh, those devices help them not only connect with the information that is going on in today's economy, in today's world, but uh, being that real estate has been a topic of conversation since, well, 2007, 2007. 2008, uh, they want to know what's what's value out there and what what's going on with their particular homes and their particular area and their particular market. And I know that you've talked a lot about uh, in past shows about getting appraisals done on properties and things like that and using you know, smartphone applications. But the bottom line is that uh, they want to have information readily available and they want to be able to feel like they are being listened to when they actually engage a realtor. Uh, internet home shopping. I call it shadow surfing when people are kind of looking online and they're looking uh, for homes uh, versus I think a couple of weeks ago you talked about the custom client portal that any realtor can design for uh, a shopper or even someone that's listing a property. What do you think the statistics were originally when I first became an ePro realtor about a decade ago? How many people, uh, this is right after the Al Gore created the Internet, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> how, how many people do you th think used uh, the Internet to, to search for homes uh, back then versus today? What, what are your thoughts? Oh, my gosh. I, I would have to say it's probably less than 15% of the population, uh, maybe even less. Yeah, well, it's just fact, a wild guess. It's just a while back, and it actually grew to an astonishing seventy-eight percent. But in today's world, uh, today's world, about ninety-five to ninety-eight percent of people actually look online before they ever go driving around uh, in cars. And the reason why is because they can take virtual tours online, they can see photos of properties online, and they can get real estate rates and figure out what their payments right. are right. online. All the calculators online. Yeah, yeah. and they, with their budget, you know, the rates, you know, we talked earlier about, uh, they've been the lowest in 50 years. Mm -hmm. So um, that custom client portal and, and being able to actually look on, on the Internet uh, in a valuable way and and you mentioned uh, you know, some of the things that, that people can get to in terms of social media uh, with Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and YouTube and, and, and things of that nature. And you know, basically, people want to have the ability to, to see and connect. Uh, social media is social. So let me ask you this, Brian. Why would, a, why would a person out there seek out a real estate professional when all of these tools are available That's to them? That's a really good question. Gosh. You always ask I'm coming back questions. next week, darn it. <laughs> You're invited back. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, I really, truly, I'm all here for clarity. No, so when I'm, I'm hearing your really conversation, I'm thinking, I, as I a really consumer, why would I bother? I because, you know, the, uh, the average consumer doesn't want to have anyone bother them. They That's want true. They want to get the information on their own. Yeah. It's kind of like the do-it-yourself project. You know, uh, do-it-yourself has become very, very popular in the recent years. And HGTV, yeah. DIY. Yeah. And they, they, yeah. can, they can do it themselves, and, and, they, and they get into projects a lot of the time where they think they have it figured out, and at some point, that rehab project becomes a, oh, my goodness, I better call a professional. So um, the... 
the bottom line is that that a professional once the once the consumer decides to utilize the services of a professional, they're going to have the most up to date information. They're not going to be second guessing is that uh, website with that valuation model is it accurate or not accurate? Uh, this the sales of the properties in around the area are they accurate or not? Um, from a comparative market analysis to you know just simply uh, window shopping. Um, I would say that every buyer goes through a, a what I call a buyer cycle. Um, you know, whether you're shopping for a suit or a home, you go from a walking around looking at the different products to actually getting to the point where you need to have somebody help you mm-hmm. pick something out. Well, so, Michelle, you, you, like you've said on past shows, you know sometimes the listings that people have, if they're just looking on the internet, the information is outdated or what mm-hmm. have you. And certainly in my business, I mean, there's all kinds of information that you can get, you know, you do it yourself, financial advisor, you know, E-Trade, mm-hmm. I mean, th- that kind of thing. And it's like, there's so much information you can get, but would you say maybe, you know, consumers can kind of whittle down like what they're looking for, have a general idea for what the market is, and what, and then and then use a professional to really to really give you a realistic expectation of like here's how fast homes are moving, here's how you need to price it. Because I think that's what you guys have talked a lot about since I've been on the show. Is just like you got to be realistic with your pricing, and you have to know how fast the market is moving and price it right, or put in a legit offer in order to actually be successful. Well, I think shopping for a home is just like doing anything else. Like I, I used to work custom building. It's like building a house. You need to know what you're looking for before right. you can share that information with anybody else. So I don't think it's wrong for consumers to be out there plowing. It's good to have knowledge. I mean, it's good to have knowledge. Drive neighborhoods. Get, get used to where do I want to be have generally. perspective right. as sure. to where you'd like to live. Mm-hmm. What types of amenities would you ideally like to have? Getting some of that perspective sure. is a tremendous amount of the legwork mm-hmm. be, before you quote unquote put the car in gear and start right. rolling. Right. Um, but it's a double-edged sword, I think, because some consumers, and a lot of potentially what got us into this whole problem in the first place, is if we're a little overzealous and we don't make sure that we have a little dose of caution that can be a double-edged sword, and we also don't enlist a, a real estate professional on our side that helps us to refine our expectations, helps us to refine what it is, where it is, how we go about looking for that most important, the largest single single largest purchase that we will make in a lifetime. We need we need a real estate professional on our. Yeah, time, you know, Craig, on one of the things I, I think that you know people once they feel comfortable and, and they go through the process of uh, saying to themselves, you know what, I'm going to come out of my cocoon. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and engage a professional. Um, that professional needs to be a listener. Do you think uh, that? Co- it, it, excuse me, real quick. Do you think that cocoon is partly uh, a cocoon of fear? And I say that all. I mean, all, in all seriousness, because a lot of consumers are really scared. They're scared yeah, to get taken yeah, advantage they of. Are. They're scared um, with misinformation. Uh, big, and I think houses. they they use that to insulate themselves from the market. And then at some point, hopefully they do either get referred to someone or they, uh, they, they find a real estate professional that they can like as well as, most importantly, trust so they can begin to move forward really concretely in their search. And when you say like, you're not just referring to the Facebook. No, <laughs> no, no, a little, little deeper than that. Uh, yeah, personalities <laughs> a, yeah. as well. And it's good uh, for uh, for buyers and sellers to to research their real estate professional. They can use the web to find out a little bit about the real estate professional. Does that professional have a Facebook account? Are they keeping things updated? Are they putting properties on YouTube? Are they looking at uh, how they engage their their uh, clients? Are they uh, do their are they have testimonials that that talk about their services Those are all great things to be looking at a real estate professional um, advantages of using uh, someone that is engaged with those technology tools like an epro realtor for example would be that 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 person has been certified by a national association that they've got the skills to respond I think one of the biggest complaints that buyers and sellers have is that Realtors don't respond. I called, I emailed, I texted, and didn't hear anything back. Not just right away, but for several days. 
So uh, surprising. Yeah, it is surprising. I don't know that I have a client that I'm representing a client right at the moment that does not like to text. Other than oh, excuse me, the Department of Housing and Urban Development. They don't text. They don't text. They won't text you. Everybody, I don't get a text from them at all. No, just certified mail. Yeah. Um, (laughs) You know, the perception of age is not uh, not a criteria too. By the way, correct. I agree. You have people in their 60s and 70s. They're texting as well, and they've got their smartphone in hand, and they're driving around looking at properties. Uh, as well as the uh, the generation uh, wires that are out there that are pushing the market envelope in terms of the technology. So, yeah, texting, email, uh, and even have, recently I got a Facebook post saying, you know, can you tell me about this property? And I, I didn't even know who that person was. Right. And they were referred to me by a friend through Facebook. So It's, wow. it's just as important for a buyer to understand how to stay connected as it uh, is a real estate agent. Mm-hmm. It is a two-way street. Sure. It really, really is. It's so, so critical. The, the, the stream, I've always used the analogy, the stream is going so fast, so all the time, you get, you know, don't get off the bank of, of the river unless you're prepared to swim and swim <laughs> fast. <laughs> Go very fast. Right? Yeah. But today's connected consumer just wants realtors who are responsive. Uh, you know, on the way to the show, I, I'm, I'm driving my car and I'm, I'm, I'm looking over at the phone in my seat, right? Because I received a text message there, did not pick it up in my hand. Uh, of course not. Of course not. Of course. The police are waiting outside. That's right. Yeah, That's right. But looking at those and uh, thinking to myself, you know what? Um, that client is is wanting my response, and so having that ability to communicate is is very important. Um, both by email, text messaging, you know, Facebook, all those features that you know, a lot of realtors are embracing in today's world. Um, you know, when you when you look at uh, from a selling standpoint, uh, sellers are going to want to have the latest technology in advertising their properties. Uh, you know, look- otherwise you're not going to be their agent. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Multiple multiple venues, and the, the MLS uh, propagates data throughout. Uh, the various internet sites, but you know most uh, high end realtors are, are using you know Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and other social media means to to promote properties and get the word out not only to the four thousand realtors we have in our community but you know, being with Remax, we get a lot of buyers throughout the world that are actually looking at our area based on school districts and things like that and and you, home affordability yeah. But, our full affordability is amazing compared to you know the San Francisco market, Los Angeles market, and uh, what what you can get for your bang for your buck here in the Fresno Clovis area is absolutely outstanding. With today's in- couple with today's interest rates, it's incredible. So staying yeah. connected is extremely critical. Brian, thanks so much for the update. If you'd like to get a hold of Brian with uh, Remax Gold here in Fresno, again that's Brian Souza 696 3905 If you have, or you can reach me on the web at www.briansouza.com. <laughs> you know, nice. Good point. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Again, if you have any real estate or mortgage-related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, call us anytime, 800-979-3958. We'd love to hear from you. You can also check out our resources online. Go to our website, please, reofresnohomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, use Press 4 Keyword. Friend Valley Wide on Facebook. Or use Press 4 Keyword. KMJ, call Valley Wide. To call us anytime. We'd love to hear from you. Well, again... Superstar, extraordinaire, financial Who, me? guru. Oh, <laughs> yes, you. Okay. We've got once again our every other week special guest, Kate Island from UBS Financial Services, here in the studio with us for our Market Watch update. Make sure you stay with us. You are listening to the Real Estate Radio Network, helping to redefine real estate here on 1059, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit hudhomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit hudhomestore.com.
Mortgage interest rates are at historic lows, and there's never been a more affordable time to buy real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing property, let the mortgage professionals at Valleywide help. Valleywide Homes has been helping homeowners with their mortgage needs since 1997. When it comes to the Valley's real estate, we know our way around the neighborhood. Call toll-free, 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valleywide Homes to work for you. Valleywide Homes, NMLS number 342-062-235-952. California Department of Real Estate License, 0122 have you ever thought about going solar? It's never been easier to go solar than with a SunPower lease. You'll start saving money the very first day. Arise Solar has a team of energy consultants ready to help you determine if going solar is right for you. Start taking control of your energy costs. Contact Arise Solar, your local SunPower Elite dealer at 449-8989. That's Arise Solar at 449-8989. Or use press 4 keywords, Arise Solar. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Well, as I mentioned before the break, we told you that uh, we've got Kate Island from UBS Financial Services here in the studio with us again. Kate, I was just, during the break, we were talking about what a great show it was two weeks ago when we talked about bonds. and Bond uh, basics, yeah. Yeah, just, it was, seriously, bond basics, it was so awesome. Well, today we're going to shift the focus a little bit because if you have a diverse portfolio, you're not only going to have... Uh, bonds in your portfolio, but you're also going to have stocks. Oh my gosh! Indeed, yeah. also gonna... called equities. Equities, stocks, AKA. equities, Ownership. AKA. Mm -hmm. You know it. You know it. Make us smart, would yeah. you please? Well, so you know, as we talked about bonds, bonds are loaning money. Mm -hmm. It's lending money to an operation with the hope of getting interest payments and getting your principal back. Pretty simple. Okay. Yeah. Bonds were for sure. We were getting our principal back if we bought them. Well, right. depend, depending on the entity that yeah. <laughs> that you We're loan it to. We said yeah. Greece, we could make like uh, 13%. Yeah, like you can loan money to Greece right now at 30% okay. for 10 years, but you may not get your money back. Yeah. But generally, so, that was the difference. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So there, so typically with bonds, like there's a much better um, probability of you getting your principal back. So stocks. So stocks are, you are literally, you're investing in an idea. Okay. You're investing in a company. Okay. Stocks can go to zero. Anybody who you know owned Enron stock, yeah, you understand Bye -bye. that. So companies can go can go under, mm -hmm. right? They can mm -hmm. go bankrupt. Right. Um, the difference, one of the differences between stocks and bonds, just in the capital structure, is that if a company does go bankrupt, bondholders are paid out first. Like, let's say the company owes a hundred million dollars, right? That, or that was you know that was uh, with stockholders and and bondholders. Mm -hmm. Well, um, bondholders are going to get paid off first so after they start selling. Order. There is absolutely a pecking wow. order. Yeah, and different types of bonds, whether mm -hmm. they're subordinated um, or not, they, there's a different pecking order within that. So when you and that's why that when you're talking about consulting a professional even if you do your research online you really have to know what you're buying when you buy individual bonds because there is definitely a pecking order now with stocks typically when a company goes bankrupt there's nothing left after all the creditors have been paid off i mean just think about like a bankruptcy right right yeah. you pay off the people who you owe money to right right not your friends who've like Giving you money for sure. the garage band that you were going to start, or you know, you know whatever, you know, hey, whatever it is. It was a great is. idea. It was a great idea, Chris. It was okay. a great idea. But that being said, mm -hmm. so stocks are more risky generally. Generally, yes. Okay, and we're hoping that they're going to rise in value based on someone's idea or business plan. Yes, and yes. performance as well. And performance. Mm -hmm. So think about Apple. Mm -hmm. Apple was Steve Jobs in his garage. Mm -hmm. Like quite literally, yeah. that was how, how it started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when the company goes public, so when you can buy it on an exchange, it means that they are doing a public offering mm -hmm. so that people can actually buy it. Mm -hmm. I mean, Apple is trading at three bucks a share at one point in time. And people, when you when you want to buy a stock, it's you're you're buying a stake in the company. You mm -hmm. want to be an owner of that company, and I think that's important to know the distinction between stocks and bonds. Bonds, you're lending. Mm -hmm. Stocks, you are taking ownership in mm -hmm. the company. So, it, real quick, uh -huh. w w is when you talked about bonds uh, two weeks ago mm -hmm. and that bonds would pay interest, is a dividend that is generated from a stock the same idea, the same mm. concept, or is it more so no. a dividend is based upon? Yeah, ish. Ish. <laughs> kind of ish. <laughs> it's the same. So, a dividend, so after a company makes money, uh, or like let's say that, you know, they've paid all their bills, they've paid down, you know, the cost of their inventory, that kind of thing, they've paid their employees. Um, if there's money left over, 
the company gets to choose what to do with it. I personally like companies that make the decision to pay a dividend because what they're saying is, we've made this money, this is extra profit, we can either keep it for ourselves or keep it in the business, or we can give it back to you shareholders, you owners in the company, and if you guys like us enough, you can make the decision then to reinvest that capital back into the company. So I think it says a lot about yeah. the stability um, of the company. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, too, is you, you know if, if your revenues or your profit flows are so up and down from year to year, one year, one year you can pay a dividend, the next year you can't. Like Typically, you're just not going to pay a dividend because you want to make sure you've got that cash reserve. Mm -hmm. So the other thing that dividends say about a company is they've got very steady cash flow, very steady revenues. Mm -hmm. They're making enough money to cover their bills, pay you out, and also keep a little for themselves. Okay. And so I think you know the, we, we our team, we really like dividend payers mm -hmm. if you're going to be in the stock market, especially because a lot of our clients are approaching retirement mm -hmm. or are in retirement. Mm -hmm. Um, you need income, sure, right? So dividends are a way to have an ownership stake in a company, but then also get paid out, you know, until you decide that you don't want to be an owner. And in dividends, that dividends are something also different than increasing the stock, the actual stock price, because Correct. increasing the stock price Correct. is driven by yeah, what? There's well, there's two ways to make money. The stock can go up, and that's because the company's making more money, mm -hmm. um, or they can pay a dividend. You know, typically you'd want, <laughs> ideally you want one that does both. <laughs> I want <laughs> <Right>. both. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> okay, so. Um, because, again, you're educating us. Um, I know that you and I have talked a little bit about the fact that I personally have always been told, do not invest unless you know what you're investing in. And you so, said that before. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. So if you um, utilize a service, mm -hmm. uh, I don't care if it's Walmart, JCPenney's, Macy's, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. whatever that entity is, if you use them, you know them, you like them, those are the companies to invest in. Yeah. Or at least research. that's a good place to start. Okay. Absolutely. Like, go to your grocery store, okay? Because mm -hmm. there's a lot of big food companies that mm -hmm. we really like because they're consistent. Mm -hmm. um, and they make things that people have to have. But when you go to the grocery store, you know, after you have a couple items in your cart, just look on the back of all the boxes and the containers. Mm -hmm. See what are the parent companies of what all those. What are you those. buying? Right. And chances are it's going to be a, a lot of the big names that you'd be very comfortable owning. Oh, and those are also a lot of the companies that have paid a consistently increasing dividend. Mm -hmm. Wow. So another point about dividends is that you don't just want to look for a company that pays a high dividend. You want to look for a growing dividend. Because after all, I think like the first or second show I was on, we talked about inflation. At just a 3% rate of inflation, your cost of living doubles every 18 years. So if you know 18 years ago you were getting a 5% dividend, but that dividend amount never grows, well, inflation is going to eat away at that, and that dividend is going to be much less meaningful after a period of time. So those companies that continue to pay an increasing dividend means they're making more money. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's good. It's so, going with the absolutely, inflation. Absolutely. And UBS, my company, we've got a great list. They call it the dividend rulers list. Mm -hmm. And if you that put a ruler, awesome. yeah, it, yeah, it's actually really cool. I don't like all the companies on there, but again, it's a good place to start. Um, but if you were to put a ruler up to their dividend growth line, it would be like their line of growth as straight as a ruler, dividend uh, rulers. Uh, I like yeah. to say dividend rulers because they rule the world like it's oh, a lot of yeah. big companies. So take it, how, yeah, take it however you want it. I really did. I thought this yeah, was where you were going. Either, but. either way. Um, but that's a great place to start because you can look at, again, not just companies that pay the highest dividend. Be be careful, investors. Be careful with those companies. Oh, you know, we get calls like oh, this, this stock is paying a 12% dividend. That sounds great. Let's take a look at the cash flows. Let's before, drill it down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, before you, you know, before you think that that's like the best, because there's, you know, there's a reason. Either the price has dropped significantly, which means the yield goes up, or like, you know, is that dividend sustainable? I mean, there's things you have to look at. Not that they're, not that high dividend paying stocks are bad, right. but you want to also look at dividend growing stocks. Well, what okay. type of dividend, when you're talking dividend, what type of dividends should you Exactly. Be looking for yeah, so like historically, well, right now the S and P five hundred ha is paying on average a dividend of like two point one percent, which is actually one of the highest dividend rates that we've seen. So the five hundred companies that make up the S and P mm -hmm. five hundred on average are paying out a little over two percent. Mm -hmm. um, as we've talked several times on the show, you can loan money to our government, so you can be a lender uh, for ten years. I already at less told than you, I'm not for that one again. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's like, so this is a good thing for people who are really scared to enter the, the stock market, it's like, well, you can either lend money for a very low rate and it never changes. Mm -hmm. That rate will never go up. doesn't mm -hmm. matter if interest rates rise. If you lent money at a certain rate, that's where it is. Right. Or you can take a portion of your money and invest it in good, solid companies that have historically 
paid you raises. Mm -hmm. And like you mentioned uh, a couple weeks back when we were talking about bonds, bonds have a specific term, correct? Yes. So they all have a, a specific a term, a maturity at exactly. the at the end of that bond. Mm -hmm. Whereas stocks, it's a little different, yeah. or it's a lot different. I should yeah. say. Yeah, I mean, stocks you can own forever, provided mm -hmm. the company is still in business. Sure. You know, and so that's a nice thing too. It, it, you know, and personally, one of the things that I do is on a monthly basis, I put a little bit of money into a couple of those dividend-growing stocks. Mm -hmm. Not a lot, but you're just buying shares on a regular basis and you just mm -hmm. keep doing that because their prices have historically gone up because mm -hmm. they sell goods that people have to have or they always buy no matter if the economy is good or bad and mm -hmm. they pay good dividends. So, mm -hmm. you know, for younger people, I like that approach. You know, okay. you don't necessarily have to, um, you know, have all growth or pick stocks or bonds. But it's like, you know, pick some companies that you know and you like and you don't mind following and, and do that for the long term. And a lot of people over the last, say, 10 years, because of the access of the Internet, have gone and done their own buying, trading, etc., based on people's words. I like the little word. baby in the crib that he, he, he <laughs> has his own little... He's a lot cuter than I am. Good marketing. <laughs> <laughs> you remembered no it. No doubt. Yeah, no doubt. But, but my question would be for, for those of us who are not that savvy... Mm -hmm. To sit down with someone like yourself and, and help us to right. pick those out yeah. as far as... That's what we do. What would be the first road step on our roadmap? I mean, other than having money in the bank. Well, you know, yeah. Having some yeah, cash. Yeah. But also, but, you know, first things first, you need to have a, do a financial plan. You need okay. to go through that process to see... Because, and I think we talked about this, like our team kind of believes in like a, a three-tiered approach. You need to have your emergency savings in place first. Mm -hmm. And and typically, if people come to us... and, and we manage money for people and manage financial relationships in two different ways. We are asset managers, so we will help you invest your money, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, we can also just do financial planning. If maybe you don't have the asset base yet that, to invest, mm -hmm. um, you, you can just employ us to do your financial plan. We can lay everything out for you and say, you know, here's, here's, here's the, the plan that you need to do. And then every couple years, depending on how old you are, you can check back in with us and we can say, did you stick to the plan? Um, you know, if you didn't, here's what we need to do to adjust it, okay. that kind of thing. But we can tell you, um, you know, what's the appropriate amount of stocks versus bonds, how to actually okay. go about Based it. Based on the phase of, of life, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And stocks, you don't just have to buy an individual company. There okay. are all kinds of packaged products like mutual funds, exchange traded funds, closed in funds, unit investment trusts. You can dip your toe in the pool and not absolutely, jump in absolutely. all the way. But I definitely, I mean, obviously I'm a little bit biased, but I definitely think you should employ a professional. This is your money. Right. And, you know, if you make a mistake with it or if the market affects it at a time in your life like close to retirement where you can't get it back you can't get those working years back mm -hmm. that's going to be a problem for you and i think uh, let me just say this I i'm going to go out on a limb here kate it's okay to be biased <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, I, I got, yeah i guess that's true it, it i guess that's true yeah again, we want you to protect our consumer listeners right no, you yeah. are a professional right. in your given field mm -hmm. right. it isn't you didn't just wake up one morning and say gosh i want to be dad i want to be a financial planner <laughs> and he says well not. great job sweetheart why don't you show up to the office with me about nine o'clock this morning and we'll get we'll started. Just go ahead and get rolling on <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. There's a tremendous really. amount of, uh, of knowledge learn, of knowledge that mm -hmm. goes into getting you from that point, that little girl that went to work with dad oh. that one day. Who saved her business. It's, it's very similar to the real estate world where the better job that you do, the more you'll get referred to people. Absolutely, yeah. I you mean, know. we don't, you know, thankfully our business is big enough that we're not, you know, hurting for, for, for new clients. Um, and so we just work on a referral basis. And it's, you know, it's nice It's nice to be at that point, you know, in our business. But, yeah, I mean, we want to do a good job for people, especially because the better job we do, I mean, the more referrals we get. That's but exactly also, right. people stay yeah. clients. And, and you get to know them very personally. I mean, it, they're... It's yeah. an interesting job in that. It's respect, part of, and Michelle said this before, it, it, I, I'm going to stop everybody. Okay. It's who's on your team. team. That's right. That's and, great. and I'm going to tell you right now, we, we were talking in the hall before, uh, and, and we didn't quite get to this point, mm -hmm. but um, after uh, you come back, you're going to take a week off or two or mm -hmm. thereabouts as far as the show's concerned. Right. We're going to wish you well as Thank far you. as what's going on Thank here. Thank you. Appreciate that. And but I want you to come back and I want you to talk about, I want you to go in the details about that three-headed approach or that three-phase approach planning, yeah. so we can drill it down a little bit better because we've, we've, we've done some kind of basic 101 mm -hmm. as, far as, as far as bonds are concerned, as mm -hmm. far as stocks are concerned. But let's really t take a look at what's that process that we go through in order right. to get you to the point of, well, hey, right at the moment, you need to pay off a little debt, or you need to you need to get debt free, and you need to work mm -hmm. on establishing that emergency savings. Absolutely, and uh, I, the goal is the roadmap for our 
for the consumer, for our listeners. Oh, my exactly. God. exactly. We want them to yeah. be educated along with us about how do yep. they take the steps in that direction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, I'd be happy to awesome. do that. Let's, let's that's, do that's that. That's fun for us. We like the financial planning. I mean, stocks and bonds are great. As I told you, bonds are very sexy. Well, we Love need it. those educational <laughs> pieces. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Totally. Yeah. Again, if you have any real estate or mortgage-related questions or questions regarding the information that you hear on our show, please give us a call anytime, 800 979 Three nine five eight. You can also check out our resources online. Go to our website at reo fresnohomes dot com. We'd love to have you friend us on Facebook. All you have to do is use press four keywords. Friend of Valley White on Facebook. Or if you'd like to call us, use press four. If you don't have press four, download it, set it up. It's a free application. Very It'll help easy. you stay connected to us. Use press four keywords. KMJ call Valley White to call us anytime. We'd love to hear from you. But when we come back for the break, we're going to take some listener questions. I love them. Yeah, keep sending them. They're yeah. great. You're doing a great job, guys. Mm-hmm. You're listening to the Real Estate Radio Network. Network, helping to redefine real estate here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. This program is brought to you by the Real Estate Radio Network. Visit realestateradio.us for more info. That's realestateradio.us. All it takes is one call to the professionals at Valley Wide Homes, and you'll start building wealth in real estate. Whether you're looking for your first home, moving up, or your next income-producing investment property, let the experts at Valley Wide Homes help. There's never been a better time to get into the real estate market. Visit our website at reofresnohomes.com or call toll-free 800-979-3958. That's 800-979-3958. And put the seasoned professionals at Valley Wide Homes to work for you. Have you ever thought about going solar? It's never been easier to go solar than with a SunPower lease. You'll start saving money the very first day. Arise Solar has a team of energy consultants ready to help you determine if going solar is right for you. Start taking control of your energy costs. Contact Arise Solar, your local SunPower Elite dealer at 449-8989. That's Arise Solar at 449-8989. Or use press for keywords, Arise Solar. Thinking about buying a home? Find out how the HUD Home Store can help you. Visit HUDHomestore.com. Look at HUD homes available for sale near you or nationwide. Why HUD Home Store? HUD will pay up to 3% of the buyer's closing cost. The price of the home is based on an FHA as is appraisal, which is already completed, saving you an average of $400. And there is an owner-occupant priority bidding period during the first 30 days. Want to know more? Visit HUDHomestore.com. You're listening to Real Estate Radio Network with local expert Craig Barton. Now, here's Craig. Michelle, let's take some listener questions. What do you say? I say let's do it because Bill called and we need to address his concern. Bill out let's a answer bit. Bill's question. Yeah, Bill from Madeira. <laughs> my wife, Bill asks, my wife and I are selling our home. It is a short sale. That's a little clarification there. Mm-hmm. I think we needed that. And why is it taking so long to close? I thought short sales are short. Well, the, the buyer's agent has had to ask for two extensions. What is the deal? As Jerry Seinfeld would say. <laughs> <laughs> Help, Bill from Madeira. I think one of the key uh, factors here is, you know, it kind of ties together everything we've been talking about, knowing who the players are. You know, and when, you, when you talk about a short sale, what the, the seller is trying to do is sell the home at a loss based on the price paid for the home originally and the loan against that house and you have the bank which is a servicing company behind the mortgage and then you have the investor who we were just talking about who actually owns the mortgage and securitizes that. It may not be the same entity as the servicer. It may not be and typically it's not. Mm -hmm. You know, you have the the government sponsored entities like Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac that, you know, have a majority of the the investment portfolio in terms of mortgage-backed securities but you also have a lot of other institutional investors that look at their losses for their clients and, you know, they have a fiduciary responsibility to their clients too 
to make sure that they're getting the best value for their dollar. So they'll do a net, net present value analysis on the house, and, and that takes some time based on the players involved. Wouldn't you agree, Craig? Yeah, and I think you have to take a look at There's a lot of different variables that we have here as far as the transactions concerned. Yeah. Um, it is a short sale. Um, is the delay on the servicer communicating with the with the actual investor? Um, is the delay with the actual lender that's actually approving the financing for the, for the actual loan? The buyer's agent is requesting extension. So what that tells me is there's something on the inspection side. There's something on the loan side. There's some quirky piece of the puzzle that we may not know. Correct. At this point. We need to drill down a little bit better. Yeah. The bottom line is extensions are being requested. Mm-hmm. Most short sales are short. More, most short sales just require setting the expectation. We just that's need the to be patient. That's the critical. Well, critical. Does asking. that bank have the dev- designated authority to act on the behalf, or they, or do they have to take that information and pass it along to the investor? Certainly. Well, again, if you have any real estate or mortgage related questions or questions regarding the information on our show, our uh, that we present. <laughs> That we cover on our show, <laughs> but got to get it out. Call us anytime, 800-979-3958. We'd love to hear from you. Go to our website. Check out our resources online at reofresnohomes.com. To friend us on Facebook, use Press 4 Keywords. Friend Valley Wide on Facebook. Or use Press 4 Keywords. KMJ Comment Line. To call us or give us your questions anytime. A big thank you to our special guest host, Brian Souza, Broker Associate with Remax Gold in Fresno. Brian, it was great having you here. Great appreciate you Thanks, getting up you. on this early Sunday morning. Love to have you back. Kate Island from UBS Financial Services. Kate, you rock, kid. Thank you. You you are going to make me smart one of these days, I promise. <laughs> A big thank you to my special co-host, Michelle Pettiscavalli. Thanks so much, Michelle. Hey, Love time. having you here. Big thank you to Johnny B behind the mics. Thanks, John, Johnny. you always make us sound rocking, buddy. Our goal at the Real Estate Radio Network is to get you, our listeners, the timely and accurate truth about your local real estate market so we can help bring you back home. Don't forget to tune into the Real Estate Radio Network next Sunday at 7 a.m. right here on 105.9, the FM KMJ. Make it a great day, Central Valley, and we will see you next week. The preceding program was paid for by the Real Estate Radio Network.